Hello, welcome back and thank you as always for joining me. Let's do something today that we all need to do more often, far more often as it turns out. Let's take a few moments and think about, really think about and contemplate our own limitlessness, our own boundless love. Boundless. This is not something we habitually do because we have things to do here in the world, like paying bills. I know. Eating, sleeping, going to the bathroom, and eating again, and drinking water, and work, and careers, and earning money, and all of this activity. And then we pull out our cell phones. And several hours later, we realize, wait a minute, <laughs> I've been scrolling social media. We occupy our days with stuff, and it's rare indeed, and oh so valuable to do exactly what you're doing right now, which is taking 20 minutes out of your parade of activities to contemplate your own limitlessness, and thank you for joining me. Our love is boundless because it is God's. Your love, your entire being, is boundless because it is God's. And we could end the video with that right there. So... This is not just an idea that somebody made up. This is from A Course in Miracles. Chapter 11, Section 1, Paragraph 6. If you're following along. It's not just some mad random idea that someone wishes were true, it is true. Here in the world, we find ourselves engaged in a, a very unhelpful, a most unhelpful internal dialogue where we argue for our own limitations. And we do this unconsciously a lot of the time. We do it without thinking because it is a it's a habitual tendency. I mean, we argue for our limitations all of the time. We assign ourselves one label after another, starting with species. That's a label. And then we assign ourselves, well, our parents assigned for us, unless we changed it, a name, which is a label. It's a collection of sounds. Actually, it isn't you, is it? The body is not you. Your occupation is not you. Yet we attempt to force ourselves into categories which are distinct from other categories. They're limited. To categorize yourself is to place yourself in a finite situation, a limited box, which appears to be separate from what's outside the box and other separate boxes that look more or less like this. There is nothing outside you. You are boundless and limitless. If you've never thought of yourself in this way, 
welcome. I invite you to continue to think of yourself in this way and expect resistance. <laughs> Part of the spiritual path for all of us, isn't it? Resistance to our acceptance of the truth, just as it is. You are boundless, you are limitless. Your love is as boundless as God's because it is his. If you take nothing else from today's discussion, take the fact that you are limitless. And again, we don't habitually think about it because we're in, ingrained. Our minds are, are, well, indoctrinated. Let's be honest. Our, our conditioning by society, the societies that we live in or grew up in, our parents, schools, the mass media, all of the constant barrage of advertising that we just unwittingly consume and, and think nothing of it. But when we think that this 80% water organism that can barely stand the prick of a pin that is completely finite and a limitation, we think this is us, yet we know deep down it is not. It's not. It, it's worth repeating. It's worth repeating on the spiritual path because we're all on this path because we know better. We know that there's more to it than this. If you have ever consciously or unconsciously formulated the thought that there's got to be something more to it than just all of the ridiculous drama that we occupy ourselves with on a daily basis, yeah, there is a lot more. You, in fact, have no limits at all. The physical body, not you. Days, weeks, months, years, not you. Gray hair, definitely not you. Dyed hair, not you either. <laughs> Who you are is completely unlimited. And this does not stop because you don't see it. Paragraph five. Jesus tells us the universe of love does not stop because you don't see it. Yeah, it doesn't stop just because we choose not to see it. We could cover our eyes, close our eyes if we want to, but it doesn't stop truth from being true. We could close our eyes and go off and run and hide from the light, but it doesn't stop the light from still being there. The truth simply is that we could choose to accept it and allow it or not. And when we don't, we're asleep, in a manner of speaking. This is a dream. A dream. So, God, love, same, continues on and on and on and simply is. Just because we've chosen not to see it doesn't make it any less true. Someone can deny truth all they want, but truth is still true. It's still there, even if someone has covered their eyes. And you know what else is very cool? Even in this apparent plight, even in this predicament entirely of our own making, by the way, even here where we have all of this going on and our happiness and joy is fleeting at best, where nothing lasts, even in our current place where we appear to find ourselves, 
we can still open our eyes. Just because your eyes are closed does not deprive you of the ability to see. You could choose to open them. That's just a metaphor because we don't actually see with the body's eyes. That is actually impossible because you're not a body. If this is a mind bender of sorts, we see with our mind. And there are countless examples of that in our daily life. You could be sitting at a rather boring business meeting or at work staring at a screen, maybe. Thinking of a beach in the Mediterranean or the Caribbean, or thinking about lunch, yesterday's lunch, a picnic you had when you were eight, maybe, or tomorrow's lunch, and you see it very, very clearly, where, not with the body's eyes, what you see with the body's eyes is a screen full of another freaking email. But in your mind, you're on the beach somewhere. Happens all the time. We have countless examples of this Every day, we, we see with our mind. We can choose right here in the present moment to open our eyes. We could choose to set this dream, this painful dream, aside. Because it is a dream, and it's very helpful. It's very useful indeed to liken this to a dream that we have at night, where the images that appear in the dream are real to us. We make them real. We're flying. Someone else is flying. We're walking through walls or interacting with beings that we've never seen before, where we have abilities that we don't appear to have here, encased in this 80% water thing that we call us which isn't us. I keep repeating that. Yeah, there are many reasons why. So we violate in the dream all of the laws of governance that we've appeared to agree on here in the world, like Newtonian physics. Yeah, this thing can't fly here in the world, but in the dream, it takes off and soars and does other things. Yet when we awaken, whether the dream was hot, sexy, and beautiful, because it could be hot, sexy, and beautiful, or it could be hellish and scary, a nightmare. And often it's a vacillation between the two. One minute, gorgeous, the next minute, ugly. Yet when we wake up, we recognize instantly that it was all nothing. It was a dream. The images that appeared so real are gone. And we recognize instantly they were never there. They were never there. Never there. Never there. Never there. You can call awakening anything that you want. Enlightenment is, is a common way to think of it. Liberation, realizing God. It's called different things in different traditions here in the world. But it's an awakening. It's waking from the dream to your own boundlessness, which, by the way, we can access right here, right now, even while we appear to be here checking our email and staring at a screen. You might be in a position where someone's paying you money to continue to pay the rent or the mortgage and feed yourself, and in exchange for that, you're staring at a screen or you're typing an expense report, or you're at a meeting where you would rather be somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. We all appear to be doing different things here in the world. 
and I stress, appear to be. Because in truth, we've never left our source. We are perfectly one. God is. And let's wrap it up, coming full circle to your own boundlessness, your own limitlessness. Your love is as boundless as God's because it is his. Who, where, and what are you? Do you know? I know you know. We all know. We all want the peace of God, or we would not be watching this. Because we all know there's a lot of other content out there. So you're here. Something has been said that you need to hear today. That is the voice of your inner teacher. When something lands, it's definitely your inner teacher. What you're looking at here on your device is a pixelated image on your screen. When something lands, it's your inner teacher speaking to you. You would do very well indeed to pay attention to the message because you were meant to hear it today and then put it into practice because that's where we really learn. We learn by sharing and by putting things into practical application, how we keep love and anything in our mind is by giving it away, not by hoarding it, but by giving it. Practical application is how we learn this course. Yes, it's one thing to understand the teachings intellectually, no problem. It's far more important to put them into practice because our experience shows us these ideas are true. We effectively prove it to ourselves. Yeah, that's how we really learn. Want proof? Fantastic. Good. You should want proof. Prove it to yourself. I invite you. All right. So thank you to all of you for joining me here today. And I want to extend the invitation to ask questions. Spiritual inquiry, well, it's inquiry, isn't it? So questions are a natural and expected part of this process. There's no way that you can earnestly study this course without generating lots of questions. So yes, ask your inner teacher for guidance. Do that first and foremost. But you're more than welcome to ask questions here on the comment thread here on YouTube. There have been a number of, of excellent questions and discussions lately, and those are always 100% welcome. So if you've got questions, please leave them. And if you haven't yet subscribed, we'd love to have you join us. This is the subscription over here, this arrow. Click or hover over that, you'll be prompted to subscribe and join us. And we have several videos each week. We're going through the text of A Course in Miracles, which means we have a lot to talk about. We're on chapter 11 out of 31, after all, which means a lot more discussion. All right, questions? Please ask them if you've got them, and I will see you all again very soon.